Hey everyone, this is Sean Gregory with In Christ Recovery and Apologetics. I just wanted um, to do a little video today on uh, just five verses, four verses, um, in Romans chapter 10. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to get into it. Romans 10, chap uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 1 starts out. And it's the New King James Version. Here lately, I've kind of fell in love with the New King James Version. Um, and I'm really enjoying reading out of it. But whatever version you want to read out of, I would suggest so an ASB, an ESV, um, maybe even, you know, a King James or Interlinear. Um, those are pretty good translations, um, but if you're going to be studying, I would say that those are really good um, translations to study out of. Um, and so, like, actually, when I'm reading the ESV, I'm actually jumping back to the uh, when I'm when I'm reading in the New King James, I'm jumping back to the ESV. Um, just to, you know, have more of a mindset of what the, what, what the writer's intent was, right? Um, so I would say that verse one, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. So, you know, Paul was zealous for, you know, his brethren, um, by blood, right? He, he wanted he wanted Israel to be saved from their sin and to turn to faith in Christ. Verse 2, For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. See, that's the thing with, you know, um, the Jews, even in Jesus' time, um, there's no doubt that they had zeal for God, right? But according to their traditions, right? Um, basically... A God of their own making, um, not understanding that, you know, the law was actually intended to, you know, show their own unrighteousness. Um, instead, they, you know, assumed by their good works and, you know, adding more to the law that they could actually um, earn their way uh, to heaven, right? Um so, their misunderstanding of the actual intent of the law, right? So, they would, by their good works, they would try to make themselves right with God. Um, and that's what happened. So, there was a thing called the oral law. And it was just basically like a huge commentary on the actual law that was passed down from um, generation to generation. Um and it was just added on to, right? And Paul knew all about the oral law. Um, you know, um, in regards to the oral law, he said, you know, he was, he kept it more than anyone, right? He was more um, zealous for the oral law than uh, the majority of his contemporaries, right? And so that's why people look to Paul or Saul at that time because you know he's a new man right um Saul is not the same person as Paul because he was a new creature in Christ that's he goes over this in Romans um but Saul that's why they looked to Saul for the persecution of the Christian church because they knew that Paul was very zealous for the oral traditions of the law they it, that that um, Paul wanted to um, get rid of the new Christians, right? These Christians that were proclaiming that there's only one way to salvation, and that's through Christ, right? Um, so, I'm going to keep reading on. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. So, like I said, they were trying to earn their own way, being ignorant of how righteous God, this righteous standard of God, right? Being ignorant of that, not understanding that 
that you know you can sin one time and fail fail the law in one point and be guilty of it all. The misunderstanding that they can make themselves right that the more good they do will outweigh um, the bad that they have done. Not under, you know, um, not to say that they didn't understand that God was infinite. Not to understand, not not that they misunderstood that you know God created the universe, so he was, you know spaceless, timeless, and immaterial. Not to say that that, not not to say that they, their misconception was is that I guess the righteousness of God in and through the law, the righteous requirements, um, um, you know, believing that you know the blood of bulls and rams could take away their sin. I think that would be the misunderstanding. Um, them thinking that you know those sacrifices were actually making them right with God rather than being a covering of their sin, right? So that's why, so the righteous submitted to the righteousness of God. So submitting to the righteousness of God would be to understand that I can't do it, but Christ has done it, right? Um, seeing that there is um, <clears throat> basically a progressive revelation in God's word and that these things have come to pass in and through the person and work of Jesus Christ. Understanding that He is He is our righteousness. That's given us He lived a life that we never could live. He lived a perfect life that we never could live. Um that you know, in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, Paul says that, you know, Jesus uh died, was buried, um and was raised. He was crucified, died, buried, was raised on the third day, right? Um, <clears throat> and the resurrection was proof that, you know, Christ's sacrifice was sufficient. God raising him, him being raised from the dead was proof that Jesus Christ's sacrifice, his, the propitiation, what, the atonement um, was successful right and so my point being is is that our sin is attributed to Christ right if we if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead we're saved right we're trusting in Christ not our own works we get we need to repent from the mindset that I'm earning my way because I've done that and I do that still to this day to where you know my righteous good deeds are earning more and more favor with God. But but the reality of that is is that when God looks at me, he sees the righteousness of Christ. It's not, not dependent on what I have done or will do. Rather, what Christ has done for me, right? And what Christ is doing in me, right? Um, but justification... It, it is it doesn't just go away when if if we sin again right um i i'm not becoming unregenerate if i sin again we need to abstain from sin right we need to we need to have a life that is submitted to the lordship of jesus christ we need to live in a constant state of repentance turning from sin and submitting to the lordship of jesus christ right um but the fact of the matter is is that I'm no more I'm no more justified when I'm doing good than when I screw up you know when I sin against the holy god even as a christian um I'm I'm no less justified than I was when you know um you know 5 minutes before so we need to repent from that mindset that you know, our good works are earning favor with God. Favor has been won. There's still a war waging in us. We're, we're still being changed and conformed to the image of Christ. There's still sin that we're, we're putting off in our lives, right? But, but the fact of the matter is, is that, um, the fact of the matter is, is that we're fighting from a place of victory in Christ. Christ has done this for us. His life's attributed to us. Our sin is attributed to Him. 
I'm by no means justifying anyone because Paul goes over this. You know, should we can, should we continue in sin so that grace may abound? He says, no, God forbid. God forbid that we continue in sin so grace may abound. May it never be. No, that's not the point. The point is, is realizing that we're a new creature, creation in Christ. That the old has passed away and behold, all things are new. We're not trying to be something that we're not. We're not trying to be this new creature. You are this new creature. That's what the scripture declares is that you are a new creature. When we sin, when we sin, we're not living in the reality of us being a new creature, right? When we sin, we're actually going against the grain at that point. We're, 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 it's not like we're jumping back in the flesh, now but rather rather um rather we're how do i want to put this rather we're not walking in the spirit but walking in a carnal mind but the thing is too we need to abstain from the mindset that you know there's this thing called the carnal christian um I think that's a that's a wrong mindset, right? I, I've just been listening to this book, uh, Justification and Regeneration, by um, by uh, Charles Leiter. And the thing is, man, is that you know the truth that he's proclaiming. Yeah, I mean, I I really I really enjoy his approach on these certain subjects. Um, how we are justified in the regenerating process of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, because we are being changed and conformed to the image of Christ. Um, but I don't think that you can come to Christ and continue to live, you know, for years and years on end in a lifestyle of sin. Um, I don't, I don't see how that's possible. Because if I do sin against my heavenly Father, I'm sorry, y'all. I just don't. I mean, I feel so overwhelmed and horrible when I sin against my father, right? And but that's a good thing, right? You know, praise God that there's conviction, um, that there's conviction, and, and that that in chastisement, right? Um, that you feel that way because. God forbid that you didn't. If you were in Christ, God forbid that you continue in sin. I think that would mean that, you know, God doesn't truly love you <laughs> if he's not if he's not um enabling you to strengthening you to um uh abstain from living in a lifestyle of sin, right? Um so let me let me continue on. I'm sorry, I got on. So submitting to the righteousness of God, because listen to this, verse four: for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. He's the end of the law. What does that mean? That the law has been done away with? No, that's not what it is. It's basically saying that we are coming. We come to Christ for the fulfillment of the law, right? That we've come to Christ. Um, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. So basically, that I am ceasing from my righteous, my self-righteous good deeds. I, I cease and repent from trying to earn my own salvation. Right. Instead, I look to Christ for my righteousness. That Christ has already done it. That I'm turning to Christ. And trusting in his finished work that he has done, right? Um, it's not to say that there's a, a, a that Christ had fulfilled the law. That's back in Matthew, okay? Um, what this is, it's not saying that the you know that the Ten Commandments have been done away with. That's not what that's not what it's saying. No, it's saying that Christ has Christ is the fulfillment that that once in Christ I'm I'm declared righteous that's what he that's what he's saying I'm declared righteous in Christ 
Um, y'all, I, I need this. I need to be constantly transformed by renewing of my mind through the reading of God's Word. And I would hope that you would need to do that too. But it doesn't just stop there, right? Am I going to submit to the truths that I see biblically? I mean, we are. I mean, there's a constant state of the Christian that's at war, you know, with the flesh. Yeah. We're still in this flesh that's, this flesh that's still being regenerated, right? Um, and at times, we seek fulfillment on certain desires and illegitimate ways, which is sin, right? And... When we do, I just praise God that anybody that's watching this understands that there's going to be conviction. It's going to make you to the point that you're sick. And I hope and I pray. I pray to God that it does make you sick because what that tells me and what that tells me is that you're a true convert, right? <laughs> you want, You desire... You're, you're in the spirit. You desire to please the Father rather than to be okay with living in the sinful flesh, right? So I praise God that He's working in you the same as He's working in the rest of the body of Christ. I hope for the day that one day when we see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ face to face that we're going to be placed in a glorified body. There's going to be no more sin, right? Praise God for that. I hope this video is edifying for you today. I know that it was kind of a little bit of a ramble, but I got through those those four verses, okay? Romans 10, verses 1 through 4. Check it out. Look at it. All right, thank you. Grace and peace.